Phil Joel is one of New Zealand's most successful exports. He's been the bass guitarist with one of Christian music's biggest bands, Newsboys, since 1995. He's also renowned as a solo artist with his own career as a singer-songwriter. And Phil and his wife Heather are with me in the studio. But before we chat with them, take a look at this. It's great to draw near to God in church. It's great to draw near to God in Bible studies and prayer meetings. But what the Lord was wanting from me, because I've been involved in those things since I was eight years old, what He was wanting from me was an intimate time with Him. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Those are not my words. That's the words of the Bible. It's a promise from God. How do we build a relationship with the Lord? Let's blow the mystique off this puppy, honestly. Let's blow the mystique off it. We need to spend time. It takes time. And Phil and Heather Joel are with me now. Good to have you both here. Hey. One thing that surprised me about you both is you're just so laid back and low key. Is that something that you've kind of tried to do? Is that a persona that you put across or is that just personality? I got. A, I think we need to ask a question in return though. What did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> New Zealander. Yeah, that's no, New true. Zealander. Although I haven't lived in this country for 12 years. I mean, mm. still very much a New Zealand bloke, aren't I? Am I a bloke yeah. still? Uh, well, no, you're very, you're definitely Kiwi through and through. Yeah. You bring, he, we have a great blend in our family of American and Kiwi and, and we're now Southern. We're Southerners. We are Southern. We, we live, live in, in the South, in, so. in the South, in, in the United States, and that tends to be because that's a, a different back country place. in itself, isn't it? The South. Uh -huh. It is, but it's it's nice. Middle America is actually uh, a, a lot like Middle New Zealand. You know, very practical, down to earth, real people that care about each other. I know you've been asked this question a hundred times, um, but I still want to know the answer to it. How did a, how did a guy from Blockhouse Bay end up in you know on the cover of a Newsboys album? I mean, uh -huh. in the States, twelve years as a big time singer yes, songwriter. It's pretty strange. Um, well, I, I was in a band before uh, before I joined Newsboys called Drinkwater, mm -hmm. and we played here in Auckland. And uh, the opportunity arose when Newsboys came down to play uh, here in Auckland for us to play support. So we opened up for Newsboys, and um, and the Newsboys went back to uh, the United States. I went back to my single bedroom apartment, sleeping on the floor <laughs> in my friend's apartment. And uh, uh, a few months later, they called. They called me up. Three o'clock in the morning, phone rang, and uh, they said, "Can you play bass?" <laughs> I was a guitarist and right. a lead singer, so, but I thought, you know, how hard can it be? Four strings, you know, yeah. not six. <laughs> so I jumped on a plane. Never been on a big plane before. Flew to Los Angeles, and uh, these guys picked me up in a big Lincoln town car, never seen a car so big in my life, and uh, we went off to a rehearsal room and began to rehearse, but I was terrible, I was really bad, and, um, and they kind of, they were a little concerned, they thought, you know, what have we done, mm. we flew this guy all the way around the world to, to join the band and he can't even play, and uh, anyway, I was trying to be like, be a bass player, you know, right, bass yeah. players use their fingers, <laughs> so I thought, surely that's how you do it. But anyway, I said, look guys, is it okay if I, um, I'll see if I've got one in my pocket, I probably do. Uh, I said, I said, yeah, can I use a, um, a, a guitar pick? Yeah. Oh, here's one, there is one there, a guitar pick. Because uh, I'm a guitarist and that's what I use. So they said, you know, <laughs> at this point, you try anything. <laughs> you. And so I did, I, I uh, picked out the guitar pick, began to play and it worked. And so um, that helped me a lot. And then they proceeded to take me to a hotel room, locked me in that room and told me to learn the bass <laughs> Sit guitar. Sit down with someone who knows how to play. Yeah, exactly. But, um, and that was 12 years ago and... Uh, yeah, there's just something about it, you know, that um, I, the phone call came through at three o'clock in the morning mm. and um, just felt right. Now, I want to skip ahead to now. You guys are, uh, I suppose, I mean, you're doing all right for yourselves. You know, you work in TV, you work in music and, you know, um, I want to know how you fit God into, you've also got a family. How do you fit God into this sort of lifestyle? Well, I think that he's definitely not not the whole way through our marriage, but um, the first five five years, um, to be honest, um, I think in our hearts he was he was definitely you know he was, and we had a, a great passion for him. But mm. um, the last five years, that's got to be the first thing. Um, nothing else works if if that's not the first thing that we're doing. Right. You know? And so we 
we, you know, it's it was challenging at first, but we've we've kind of carved that priority. It's our, the first appointment of the day. Yeah. And and then from from there, everything else. And like she's saying, in. it hasn't always been this way. Mm. I mean, we've mm. really um, we've always had a passion for the things of God. Both of us became uh, Christians at a young age, and you know, always believes in God and and very passionate about the things mm -hmm. of God, but never never necessarily had a plan as to how to pursue Him. And in in any relationship takes a plan. Right. You know, you've got to you've got to be deliberate about your pursuits um, if you if they're going to be successful. Our relationship with God is no different. We need to be a little more deliberate about it. And so mm. five years ago, I mean I'm sort of segueing into a little bit of what we're doing now, mm. this new ministry called Deliberate People. And um, it, five years ago someone gave us a one year Bible reading schedule. And at that point we were we really needed something. We knew that what we had wasn't enough. And at that point you know, I'd been in the Newsboys for five or well, seven years, mm -hmm. and uh, it was you know the solo career was going well. Mm -hmm. was married to a beautiful woman, had a kid, things were going as planned, you know. But it just it still wasn't right because God wasn't the priority in my life, and uh, I thought He was though, mm -hmm. but but realistically He wasn't. And um, and, and, and so five years ago, we made a conscious effort to make him that priority, and we just we chose to rise early every day and seek God. There's, you know what? There's a, there's a story. There's a story in the Bible. I mean, and a lot of people know this story, uh, the prodigal son story. Mm -hmm. We think in that that's we, in terms of the prodigal son, we think of a wild guy. You know, mm. just wanted to go out and party. And yeah, maybe maybe that's the case for a, a number of us. But I think. If you look at that story, the prodigal, he went to the father and said, I want everything you can give me. This looks good. I want it all. But I have to wait for you to be dead before I can get this inheritance, right? So, mm. Dad, I just, I just want it now. Give me everything you've got. And it, I don't want to know you. I really actually would prefer you to be dead, but you're not dying. So give me everything you got. Um, and I want, to, I want to walk out of here with your name because that's part of the inheritance. And, and off he goes. And the father because he loves his son so much, he says, okay, son, I'll give it to you. I'll give you whatever you want, but, um, oh, and I'll be here when you get back. And so the son, off he went, and he's wearing his dad's name. His dad even said, yeah, mm. wear my name. And that's sort of what I've been. I've been a professional Christian, you know, a Christian musician, wear this like little badge. Mm. And so it's pretty interesting when you look at the prodigal son story, the father, he let him go and said, and he didn't say, oh, you go, but give me, no, you're not allowed to say you're my son anymore. Mm. He said, you go. And, um, do what you do what you do, and I'll be here when you come back. So I think um, I think that was a little bit how we were. I don't yeah. think we meant to be prodigal yeah. necessarily. We were his children. We loved him. Yeah, we he had, had great given intentions us, too. Yes. Great intentions. Mm. A lot of passion for the Lord, or we wouldn't have been doing the things that we were doing. Yeah, but we just didn't really know him. And like any yeah. relationship, it takes a real effort to get to know anybody. There was there really we were what was lacking for us was action. Um, we had a lot of talk, and that's yeah. good. Mm. But, um, and good moral conduct. We weren't yeah. bad people, and you know, hopefully we still aren't. But. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I think what was missing was was the action was our part of the relationship. God yeah. was doing all of his his part. He's he was doing a great job. We were we were the ones failing on our on our action. You know, so we, yeah. we were really getting ripped off. Right. Because you know? the deal is this. I mean, the deal is, what's the whole what is Jesus? This whole Jesus character. What is the whole purpose? Why did he come? Why did he um, why did he die? Why did he rise again? What was the whole purpose of his being here? What was he actually trying to teach us? He's trying to teach us that this whole thing is about a relationship, mm -hmm. a relationship with God and a relationship with his people. So what's the best thing about being a dad and a husband? The love you give and the love you receive, I'm sure is the best thing. But you know what? As being a dad, you're supposed to be teaching your kids, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we do. But I learned so much off them. I learned more about God from mm -hmm. them than from anywhere. Well, thanks for coming in, guys, and thanks, Congratulations on 10 years. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay.